You gotta fix that. You hear that? Yep. Someone's gotta turn that off. That's clean up the microphone. Come on. Someone's got that feedback on. I don't hear it. I don't hear it. I, don't hear it. I hear it. All right. Everybody in the room here is weird. There it is. Okay. I think it's that radio guy in the back of the room. All right, good morning, everyone. I'm civil rights attorney Lisa Bloom, and I'm very proud to represent Kathy Griffin. Kathy is not only one of the funniest humans alive, she has been a bold advocate for women, the LGBT community, people of color, and veterans for many years, including numerous stand up performances for the troops in Iraq, Afghanistan, Kuwait, and Uzbekistan, places that many other entertainers were too scared to go. She is also the proud daughter of a vet. During the campaign, Donald Trump said of a female reporter who had called him out on misogyny, quote, she had blood coming out of her eyes. She had blood coming out of her wherever. Kathy did not forget that disgusting remark for which Trump has never apologized. Kathy teamed up recently with a photographer to mock Trump our mocker in chief. What would it look like if his own insults were turned on him? Wearing a pussy bow blouse in a nod to his caught on tape bragging about grabbing women's genitals, she held up a Trump mask with fake blood coming out of the eyes and coming out of the wherever in full hyperbole with a stern look on her face. As she said in her social media posts accompanying the photo, quote, I captioned this, there was blood coming out of his eyes, blood coming out of his wherever. It was a parody of Trump's own sexist remarks taken to an extreme absurdist visual. Like many edgy works of artistic expression, the photo could be interpreted different ways and Kathy was fine with that. But Kathy never imagined that it could be misinterpreted as a threat of violence against Trump. That was never what she intended. She has never threatened or committed an act of violence against anyone. Her life's work is to make people laugh. And as soon as she learned that this is how it was being received, she was horrified and she took down the picture and she asked the photographer to take it down and as fast as possible she videoed a heartfelt apology literally begging us for forgiveness that should have been the end of it many male artists have created far more disturbing imagery a Marilyn Manson music video shows him beheading a Trump figure the band Municipal Waste has an image of Trump with a bloody gunshot to his head on a band t-shirt. The band GWAR has had violent images like this for president after president for years. They're all just considered bad boys. Unlike these male artists, Kathy apologized. Unlike these male artists, Kathy has endured the most powerful man in America and his family using their power to target her and her employers after she apologized. The president took a break from his busy schedule of tweeting nonsense words to target her satire, calling her sick. Melania Trump who has remained silent about her husband's effort to deny health care to 24 million Americans, cut Meals on Wheels and Planned Parenthood, chose to break her silence on news events to personally challenge Kathy's mental health. Donald Trump Jr. took a break from killing leopards and elephants to hound CNN and its anchors on Twitter to try to get them not just to fire her, but to ban her from the network where she has worked for 10 years entirely, presumably forever. But that wasn't enough. He also targeted a children's book author in his tweets, suggesting that his followers contact the publisher to fire him because Don Jr. didn't like one of his, his jokes that was supportive of Kathy Griffin. The message is clear. Criticize the president lose your job. And that's what happened to Kathy and more. 
As a result of the first family's bullying of her and of those she does business with, Kathy has been vilified. She's been receiving a lot of death threats. She's had her personal website and her social media channels shut down, been fired from multiple jobs, and had multiple events canceled. The Secret Service has reached out to her. The Secret Service has reached out to a comedian. She has had to retain a criminal attorney who is here today, Dimitri Gorin. That's D-M-I-T-R-Y-G-O-R-I-N. And he can answer questions at the end about his work. For the first time in history that we are aware of, the President of the United States and his family is personally attempting to ruin a comedian. This has been a living nightmare for Kathy. She works hard and she has millions of global fans, including me, but she lacks a TV network or an, a, a giant team behind her. And she has been suffering through this virtually alone as every kind of vile threat has poured in. She has been advised not to leave her home, not to go online, not to receive deliveries as the beatdown of Kathy Griffin rises to a crescendo. It stops here. It stops now. This is insane. Ted Nugent threatened to kill President Obama. Trump invited Ted Nugent to the White House. Trump does not realistically fear 56-year-old, 110-pound Kathy Griffin. Trump himself is currently facing two lawsuits for inciting violence at his rallies when he told his followers to, quote, knock the crap out of protesters or, quote, punch him in the face. Kathy has a First Amendment right to make whatever provocative art she chooses. Whether or not you get or like her artistic expression, in America, Kathy has the right to publicly parody the president. In Russia, feminist artists Pussy Riot were imprisoned for two years by Trump's buddy Putin. In the U.S., the Supreme Court has ruled in a series of long-standing bedrock constitutional cases that political satire is protected, and the government cannot retaliate against citizens for it. That's an important legal right that is now under attack as journalists, networks, and artists fear retribution from Trump and his administration. He is hoping for a chilling effect on artists like Kathy and other artists. He has said he wants to sue people who criticize him. Nope, that is authoritarian, authoritarianism and we will not have it. Kathy has made a decision. She is not going to stop speaking out for women, for LGBT rights, for vets, and for others. She will continue to be the fierce, brutally honest Shiro that millions love. She will continue to push the edges of our comfort level and beyond, to challenge us and to make us think. Thank you for that, Kathy, because we need you right now. I stand with Kathy and I, st I will fight for her First Amendment right to create whatever art she chooses and oppose anyone who tries to punish her for it. And we will both continue to use our skills to resist Trump, whose budget would deny heat in the winter to poor people, cut grants to help poor kids go to college, cut funding for the arts, cut NPR, cut PBS, and cut medical research. We stand against his anti-science climate change denial and his dangerous withdrawal from the Paris Accord. Yesterday, just yesterday, Trump drafted a new order that would deny birth control benefits to hundreds of thousands of American women. His misogyny knows no bounds and cries out for all of us to express ourselves as forcefully as possible against him. It is Trump who should apologize for his blood coming out of her eyes, blood coming out of her wherever, disgusting comment, which he has never done, and for being the most woman-hating and tyrannical president in U.S. history. Kathy Griffin will now make some comments. Kathy. Thank you, Lisa. Hi, everybody. I'm Kathy Griffin. I am really nervous right now. I've never done a press conference. I don't really know how they work. Feel free to jump in. Kathy, are you 
And when I get nervous, I, I like make jokes, so I'm probably gonna like stumble and stuff. She's gonna back? she's gonna make some comments and then we'll do questions, okay? I, so I sort of had a speech prepared, so but let her, let her like talk. my notes are by the wayside. It's all off the cuff. Look, <laughs> um, I'm not afraid of Donald Trump. He's a bully. I've dealt with older white guys trying to keep me down my whole life, my whole career. I'm a woman in a very male dominated field. Uh, I love what I do. I love making people laugh more than anything in the world. And I have learned over the years that sometimes when you do stand up, and I've done it in a war zone, and I've done it at Walter Reed Hospital, and I've done it at Carnegie Hall, sometimes people want, you know, a joke that's out there and a little crazy. So regarding the image that I participated in, that apology absolutely stands. I feel horrible. I have performed in war zones. The idea that this, you know, uh, made people think of this tragedy to have been touched by this tragedy is, is horrifying and it's horrible. Uh, trust me, if I could redo the whole thing, I would have had a blow up doll and no ketchup. You know, I make mistakes. I'm an out there comedian. I'm an in your face comedian. But I just wanted to say, you know, if you don't stand up, you get run over. And what's happening to me has never happened ever in the history of this great country, which is that a sitting president of the United States and his grown children and the first lady are personally, I feel personally, trying to ruin my life forever, forever. I, you guys know him. He's never going to stop. I know him. Let me, let me talk to like a camera like I'm talking to him. And I'm, I might make a couple jokes because I'm, I'm super nervous. Everyone's pointing to their camera. I'll just, <laughs> this one, this one. All right, I'll sort of look in this direction. All right, so I know him. All right, so the Donald, it's me, the Kathy. And if you guys don't know this, he, if you meet him, he wants you to call him the Donald, which I've always thought was the weird. And I remember saying to him the first time, okay, I'm the Kathy, and that went right over his nest. Okay, that was a joke about his hair. But I have seen eggs in it. Like, I think I've seen, allegedly, allegedly, I am teasing the president because this is America, and you shouldn't have to die for it. The death threats that I'm getting are constant, and they are detailed, and they are serious, and they are specific. And today it's me, and tomorrow it could be you. So, yeah, I'm an obnoxious comedian. I'm not the most famous person in the world. I'm just standing here with Lisa. I have an amazing First Amendment attorney, Alan Isaacman. If you're not familiar with his work, he won the landmark case, The People versus Larry Flint. I believe so passionately about this. If I don't stand up and say this, I'm afraid there's going to be some 12-year-old nerdy girl like me in Forest Park, Illinois, who's going to maybe be watching me to see what I do. And this bully and these, this president, of all people, is going to come after me? He picked the wrong redhead. And he's, he's sort of a redhead, although it's sort of like a parfait cup sometimes. I mean, there's like a red and then like a yellow. And I don't know. I think Melania does a lot of nice and easy. I don't know, but maybe she doesn't. The point, I digress. So that's what I do, you guys. I improvise. I try jokes. My mouth is really dry because I'm so nervous. But I don't want this to happen to anyone else. I tour for a living. I love doing it. I perform everywhere people want me to laugh. And honestly, one night it's a performing arts center and the next night it's two shows in the Pottawatomie Wisconsin Casino. And there's been a change, a real shift change. And, you know, starting maybe about, obviously about 18 months ago where I, Fox News ain't got nothing on me. Although I think you should know my mother who thinks Fox News is real is not speaking to me because she's in love with Tucker Carlson. <laughs> So I'm even in trouble with my mother. So don't worry, everyone hates me. I do. I need water. I'm gonna. I'm probably shaking, and I'm afraid I'm gonna get that under boob sweat, which is really the bad one. That was not appropriate, so, right? That wasn't appropriate. Okay, so I'm, tr I'm, tr I'm not good at being appropriate. I only know how to do comedy one way. It's in-your-face comedy. I keep it real. I I I'm gonna make fun of the president, and you know what? I'm gonna make fun of him more now. More. So I'm not going to threaten him. I have no desire to harm him or anyone. I would never want to harm anybody. But, you know, I've made fun of W. I made fun of Clinton. Oh, God, remember the Monica dress days? Those were the days. You could make dress <laughs> jokes all day long, and nobody tried to kill you. You shouldn't have to die for this. I'm under a Secret Service investigation. And the first family did not come after you with any of the other presidents. You know, it is yes. so unpresidential for and, them to and respond I, to I a get what I, I get what I am. I'm the shiny object. I get it. We all know what's going on here. They're using me as the shiny object so that nobody's talking about his FBI investigation. All right? I get it. 
And I made a horrible, horrible mistake and I made a horrible call, I understand. But everywhere I go, people actually come up to me. And I, like I said, I go everywhere, it's what I do. And they say, you know, oh, I'm a housewife and my kids have been driving me crazy and oh, I just needed two hours to blow off some steam and I'm glad you went there and you're saying the things I'm thinking. That's, those are my peeps. I'm not for everybody. I'm, I'm barely an acquired taste, frankly. <laughs> um, on a good day, I'm an acquired taste. But honestly, my whole career, I'm 56 years old. I'm 110 pounds wet. I've had everybody turn on me and I just want to make people laugh. That's all I want to do. So I screwed up, but I want the gay guy who came to see me in Lake Charles, Louisiana a few weeks ago, who said, I wanted to come here because I'm scared to come out, but I get to come here and laugh for two hours. Oh, that's what I'm telling you. That's why I'm here. It's, it's honestly, it's not for me. It's for them. I think a few people might actually be watching me and I want them to see this old dame. I'm not laying down for this guy. I'm going to make fun of him. I'm going to make jokes about him and the housewives and Kardashians. But, you know, <laughs> he does provide a lot of material. I mean, you got to be honest. He really, it's a good time to be a comedian. It's scary to be a citizen, but it's a good time to be a comedian. That's great. Should we take some questions? Did I do everything yeah, wrong? I, I did everything no, wrong. I did everything wrong. Okay. okay. I don't know how this part works. Okay, let's start okay. over here. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, in uh, December 9th, sh sh uh, reporter Shira, Hi. Shira Levine sorry, Hi. quoted you as saying that you were happy to deliver a beatdown to Donald Trump and also to Barron, and that you, quote, wanted to go down hard on Donald and go direct for Barron Trump. When is this quote So from? this is a quote. Yeah, from, I've said that in my act. Oh, okay. yeah. She said that in her act. So she years, admits, years ago. So you admitted you're going after Barron Trump. Is yeah. that what this is all about? To, I, I think, I think a comic should be able to make fun of everybody. Like I, make I apologize. My question was for Lisa. Oh. So oh. Uh, are you aware that your client is trying to go after Barron Trump? Okay, so that's a ridiculous, misleading question. And no, she hasn't said a single word here today about Barron. You're talking about something from a comedy act from years ago, I think. And let me, talk about, let me talk about this issue of children, okay? We can have edgy comics in America. Comics can say things that are not appropriate for children. Comics can create images that are not appropriate for children. Many things on the news are not appropriate for children. I'm a parent of two adult children and a teenage foster son. It is my job as a parent to filter out what is appropriate for my children. It is not the job of a comic to filter everything down to the level of an 11 year old. She gets to make the comedy and the art that she wants to make, and the parents decide what's appropriate so for children. So you think every no, news we have organization a, we can, can block out, uh, Trump can block out every news organization tweeting out this photo? You, you know what, there's a lot of disgusting stuff about Trump on the news every day, like the fact that he's making us the laughing stock of the so world. Why did she go after Barron okay, Trump you know what, there are other people here. She did years. not, wait, hold on, she did not go after a tenure, nothing That's in her, her piece had to do with Barron. So you're trying to make something that doesn't what are your exist. Thoughts on reports that I, I make fun of everybody in my act. I make fun of every, I'm like one of those people oh that God. makes fun of everybody in my act, myself the most, but I, I, I'm super real and I sort of have this gauge um, if it's if it's real or it's shocking, and sometimes I say shocking things to kind of wake people up. But yeah, I said that during a live show. I make fun of everybody in my act. Okay. I make, you know. How you said do you feel so. about the fact that he was traumatized? Well, allegedly. We don't know that. You're assuming that everything the Trumps say is true. And in fact, we know that many of the things that the Trumps say are false. So again, comedians get to be edgy. Comedians get to use four letter words. Comedians get to make visual representations that are not appropriate for children. News organizations can decide what they're going to put on daytime TV and parents can decide what's appropriate for their children to see. Next Kathy? question. Kathy, I'm also not appropriate for children, I would say across the board. <laughs> <laughs> like trust me, like when, when I used to do a joke in my act when I was doing clubs, when I would, some, sometimes someone would shout out, I've got a kid here. And I'd say, well, you're at the wrong effing place. Like, I am very open about that. Yeah. It's. I I'm. I'm you know, this is the kind of comedy I do. So it's the style of comedy that I do. Yeah, you said you 
been bullied by the Trump family? Have they reached out to you outside of social media? I don't think they have to. My impression is that they have mobilized their armies or their bots or whatever they do. Um, I, like I said, it's quite clear to me that um, they're trying to use me as a distraction. And um, I'm not going to be collateral damage for this fool. Kathy, yeah, I, think, I think he's a fool. Will. So I'm going to say I think the we're president sort of, is a fool. We're sort of going so around this way. So, I, you know, I can say that. Do you have fear for your career after this? Storm dies down. Absolutely. I don't think I will have a career after this. I think okay. he, I think he, I think he, I'm going to be honest, he broke me. He broke me. He broke. And then I was like, no, this isn't right. It's just not right. And I apologized because that was the right thing to do and I meant it. And then I saw the tide turning and I saw what they were doing. And I went, oh, okay, they're trying to spin this and they're making it about Baron and Obviously, that was never my intent. I would never want to hurt a, anyone, much less a child. But I started to see what was really happening. And then it was a mob mentality pile on. And so many people have expressed to me personally across the country at my shows, they're scared. So, yeah, I don't know what's, I don't know if I'm going to get arrested today. I don't know. What do you but think I about have to CNN stand firing up. firing you? Excuse me? What do you think about CNN firing you? It's, it's hurtful to me. It's hurtful. Yeah. It's censorship is what it is. I'll say it more bluntly. I just, she worked there for 10 years. Look, she was the best thing of, about New Year's Eve. There's a bunch of old white guys trying to silence me. And I'm just here to say that's wrong. As you don't have to like me, but you shouldn't silence a comic. As Larry King Tragic said, Ted Turner Kathy, would never have done it. Can Tragic we go around? Okay, okay, what's over here? Has Kathy talked to Anderson? Have you had a chance to talk to Anderson Cooper yet? <sighs> Has the Secret Kathy. Service talked to you? So, Secret Service questions. This is Dimitri Gorn. Sure. So, All right, let me, let me I'm Dimitri Gorn. I'm the criminal defense Can you attorney. Move to your left, sir? Sure, okay. sure, sure. Um, we're representing Kathy in the criminal investigation, which we believe is going to be closed, and we're going to fully cooperate with the Secret Service in their investigation. We don't even think it should have ever been opened. Uh, she, she basically exercised her First Amendment rights to tell a joke, and when you look at everything in the media, all the times entertainers make videos or other or express themselves in other ways you've never seen an entertainer let alone a comedian be subject to a criminal investigation it's really outrageous and i believe she's going to be cleared i believe um the secret service is you know doing their job i suppose anytime they perceive there's a threat but there really wasn't a threat uh miss griffin has expressed to you is just a bad joke she's apologized for it and we believe the Secret Service investigation should be closed as quickly as possible. Kathy, do you think that if you were a male comic, they would be coming after you as hard? The no, family? no, cut the crap. This wouldn't be happening to a guy. This is a woman thing, all right? I'm just going to come out and say it. And I'm sorry if you don't agree with me, but I live it. I'm 56 years old. Everywhere I play, there's a male promoter. There's a male who owns a theater. The people who sign my checks are white guys. They're usually older white guys. I've been living this my whole career. I've been fighting this. And stuff like that happens, which is a moment for a comic. It's funny. It's, pro it's called prop comedy. It's not my area. But there are other people that I can send you to that are better at it. That's what I do, guys. Kathy, given the chance. And then I cry, I guess, sometimes. Given the chance, what would you say to Melania or Bad Trump? Do you have anything to say to them? I don't think so. Okay. She doesn't have anything to say to them. Kathy, critics might say, do you really think with all the going on in the world, the White House is going to mobilize with old white men to, to ruin your career. Um, I'm, they have. Why, uh, why it's are on you, Twitter. Why are you doubting it? You, it? It is all over Twitter, but it's coming directly from the President of the United States to a 56-year-old female comedian who has no studio backing her, no network backing her. I don't have a big franchise movie coming out. He picked me. Don't you get it? I'm the easiest target. It's D-list comedian Kathy Griffin. You know what my life is? I go town to town with my bucket of dick jokes, and I try to make people laugh <laughs> as hard as I can. Did I say that? <laughs> I meant... Okay, but first of all, <laughs> I didn't grab anybody's you-know-what, so... <laughs> Kathy, mm -hmm. what do you say there. to Melania saying that you have mental health issues? Well, I think, I think this, there's a lot of people in this administration that seem like super nuts, and I feel like it's <laughs> weird that you guys, or anybody's acting like they're not, like, nuts. Like, <laughs> they seem like a bunch of nut jobs. I want to, like, I, I feel like... I'm okay, gonna, but I also want to say something else. You know, Kathy Griffin and Donald Trump are not equals. He is the President of the United States. We used to say that with great power comes great responsibility. We used to hold our presidents to a standard that they don't criticize artists and comedians. 
I mean, that is the point here. He's not just Donald Trump real estate developer having a celebrity feud. He's using the power of the federal government against her. There's a Secret Service investigation of her, which is completely ridiculous. And he and his family, his family is calling on Twitter for her to be fired from her job. All, that's all my is, jobs. That's what this Everything. is about. Yeah, one is not enough. Two is not enough. Anybody who supports her should get fired from his job. That is outrageous and unprecedented. Kathy, how, Kathy, many, how, many jobs have you lost, how many jobs have you lost so far this week? How many cancellations of concerts? Um, I've, I, up to date, I think I've had five cancellations of concerts. I have to say the most ironic one is a casino in Albuquerque. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, that's the, there's some irony there. Yeah, what did you think of those last few hours? Okay, so you guys want the story of what I was thinking. Is that, the, is yeah. that correct? Yeah. Didn't you speak to Tyler in the morning and didn't he ask you if you were ready to? And Make some noise, yes. Okay. So um, what happened was so simple and so silly that I'm just going to have to tell you it honestly, but I know it's going to sound probably stupid. Um, okay, so my day job, as you know, is I go around the country and I stand in front of a microphone and I write all my own material and I've done 23 stand-up comedy specials, more than any comedian, male or female, living or dead. And the reason I say obnoxious stuff like that is because I want young women watching this to know you can break a man's record. Yes. And I did it just to break a man's record. Like, I, And by the way, I then broke my own record. Yes. So that same woman, if she's doubting herself, goes, dang, she didn't break her own. And, and people ask me why, and I go, just because I felt I had to. Um, <laughs> all right, so I'm, that's like my big thing, right? So what happened was, you know, I'm a comic, and I'm an actress, and I've had a reality show and a talk show, and... Um, three shows with my name in the title, et cetera. I've been on Law & Order, I've done all kinds of jobs. And so part of my life is I do all sorts of crazy things. I do stand-up comedy, um, I filmed a spoof of the film Annie, entitled Granny, where I played the <laughs> oldest orphan <laughs> who was not adopted unfairly. So, you know what I mean? And I just did it for nothing with my friends, for free, for fun. So Tyler Shields is a photographer who I think is super artsy-fartsy, as my mother would say. I, I don't know if I swore. Not really. Okay. Um, and I'm very, very vulgar. I'm too vulgar for children, by far. Don't let, don't let your children near me or come to my show. Don't bring them. All right. So anyway, we, we get together every couple of years and we do really ridiculous photo shoots. And I know his history and some of his work is, I think, powerful. So he does sort of glamorous things and, you know, he'll take a, he took a picture of me in the morning where I looked about 15 and that was fun. And then we did this really ridiculous picture of me laying out in the backyard in a latex bikini, which you're not going to be able to unsee. Um, <laughs> but anyway, obviously I'm making fun of the fact that I'm 56 years old and I'm have a bang of bikini body and I'm in everybody's face. And by the way, here's my cellulite. You know, that's what I do. I turn things on its ear. And then some of his work I thought was powerful. He did, a, he did an image of a bus full of African-American people reading the title of the paper the day JFK died. And that was powerful. He did an image that was powerful of an African-American man lynching a Klan member. Powerful. So I know he goes there. So every shoot we do, we do one like, uh, you know, we, we think of the song, let's give him something to talk about. We give him something to talk about. We put about five minutes thought into this. I apologize. I really screwed up. We were, it was the end of the day. We'd been doing all these silly photos. And I said, as I said on the tape, all right, let's get in trouble. Let's do, let's give him something to talk about. And, you know, of course you got to make fun of Trump, the most obvious, and there's so much there. And so I started thinking about that Megyn Kelly thing. And by the way, I'm sure Megyn Kelly can't stand me, but I don't care because I'm always going to stick up for a woman who I feel is being demeaned by Trump, even if they don't like me, all right? So I thought of that, you know, blood coming out of her eyes, blood coming out of her ever. And the guys went in the kitchen and they were making fake blood with ketchup and I didn't have a full prop. And so I had like a, a, a styrofoam wig head and I sent out my assistant to get, you know, like a, a mask from a party store and we were stuffing it with Kleenex. The whole thing took minutes. And then I thought, well, let's make this really obvious that I'm really making an absurdist, artsy, statementy thing. Uh, and that, by the way, that's the technical term. <laughs> and so for a few, for a few photos, you know, I was holding up this wig head and then we kept making the hair crazier because we wanted to make it clear to people this was intentionally over the top. And I was very uh, stoic, which I never and you got you guys know I'm like frenetic and stuff. <laughs> well, on your right, she might, if frenetic is a disease, I have that. She might be right about that. I'm not a physician, but after this, I might I might try it um, anyway. So we just took these pictures and 
it was interesting. There were a few people in the house. No, I didn't do it for any money. I don't know if Tyler got paid. I don't think so, but just give them something to talk about. And it was done in minutes. And people around the room had different interpretations. One person said, it's almost poignant. It's like you're feeling sad for the country. And I thought, that's interesting. So that's what it is. You interpret it the way you want. But there was no Are you happy? asking for an apology now from President Trump because of what he's done to you? Can I just add one thing? There was no. never an intention to threaten no. anyone with this photograph. This was really an expression, a comedic expression, a political satire. And the fact that there's an, an open Secret Service investigation is really ridiculous because it's never happened to any artist before. Yeah. So she was being funny. So last kind of let's reaction. do last question. Yeah. What kind Captain of reaction? Anderson Cooper what kind of called your vote disgusting. Do you think that was him uh, talking Captain? or do you think he was pressured into saying that? Captain? I... How can we know? I don't know. I thought that better. That's all. You know, I really... Okay. Please last last question. Any you, you are what did, I saw some tape of you at the end of the photo shoot and you uh, shoot and you made some comments off the cuff like, you know, I know we're going to go to prison over this. Right, we're going to go to Mexico, so yeah. What kind of reaction were you expecting? Okay, so like I did a I did a picture with Tyler a couple years ago and it was like, you know, a statement picture, right? And I used it for some of my tour stops and some of the stops thought it was too creepy. <laughs> and it was a photo of a man's hand with scissors um, trying to cut my tongue out, as in men trying to silence a woman like you get it it's pretty obvious right and so i thought it was similar to that level i, I thought okay i know i'm gonna get some as my mother would say guff for this but um i did not think that people would be trying to murder me and mobilize other people to murder me and i i wish the president would govern instead of uh trying to do whatever he's trying to do okay thank you everybody That's appreciate it of this thank first you. amendment expression okay. of you beheading okay. lisa Ooh. bloom okay. what is your opinion thank of that first you. amendment Sir? expression Sir, you of you beheading lisa bloom is there a question is there a comment you would have about this image of beheading lisa bloom i wonder this is a first amendment protected expression and we really ought to make sure that nobody gets bullied as a result of this and the woman outside that handed it to me she should not be bullied Okay, we want to make sure that this First Amendment expression is protected, and I'm sure Kathy will protect you. Thank you. Who are you with? Who are you with? Who are you with? Who are you with? Gateway Pundit.